Welcome to the lounge in the uh, Australian pairs and we're just going to cover the Euro Aussie and also the uh, Aussie US and uh, in the Euro Aussie here we've been tracking from wave 4 here, wave 1, wave 2, wave 3 here, uh, wave 4 and then wave 5 uh, to here. Now um, before I call this top in here I would like to see an impulse wave to the downside um, because it's possible that um, this, this, uh, this, all of this structure here as wave one and two and three and four and five just for the third wave here. So I just want to get some more evidence first before we sort of move into uh, that scenario there. Um, and it will take about a session, but um, within that session we'll be able to work out if we've got a sort of overlapping wave structure here or not. Uh, wave 4 would come back to around this area here, maybe a tad lower to here, um, or the 38.2 retracement level from wave 2 here to that spike there, but I don't particularly like spikes that much. But um, yeah, so it still quite, doesn't, doesn't pan out properly, so we'll use the... Um, the wave four of one lesser degree, and we'll use one five eight as a um, as a starting point. So let's just allow this to unfold a little bit. I also want to have a look at a um, alternative count for the Australian dollar uh, as well, um, and this is the alternative count here, having a low in place now from wave four up here. Looking at this is wave one and A and a B and a C for wave two, down for three here, back for four. Uh, and down for five because wave two was complex and quite large in relationship to wave one that is um, then wave four can be simple so um, I feel that that's quite fitting it's certainly a case to put forward and in here we've also got uh, from because we'd have to take it from this low here which is fine because one and two and three ABC for four and down for five so uh, five waves up for wave one and two uh, wave 3 and wave 4 and wave 5 here. It does make wave 3 a little bit sort of short. No, it's okay, I guess. It's fitting. And then uh, five waves down for the A wave, a B wave, and a C wave here, uh, and then moving up from that point there. Now, um, the other count that we've got basically is that um, there's still a bit more of a triangle pattern to go before we get a downside here. So what I'm saying here is that we'd be going up for one, back for two, up for three, back for four, and up for five. So um, I, it's just worth talking about these. It's always good to have a look at the other side, isn't it, and know what price point or what pattern that we need to take action and so on. So, um, yeah, first of all, I think we just need to obviously watch watch both of these counts, and they're both in the same sort of zone here, so they've both got credibility. But uh, you know I love 72, so if 72 is, is breached, uh, then we'll be going long. And we'll, the other thing that we'd see here too is we'd see a lot of strength come into this because it'd be the third wave here, okay? Um, so if you do see a lot of strength coming into here, um, but we'll definitely be going long if it is indeed the case, uh, I'm just going to put it here, is to go long on tested support on... on uh, on the 72 okay so really that's all I really wanted to um, to, to say on this uh, here at the moment and the other point too is that the um, we're looking for a bounce in the uh, US dollar index off the 95 we're looking for a top in the euro uh, we're looking for lows in the US and European stock markets and um, and possibly uh, in Australia as well. But I can see the Australian banks have got further to move down. They just haven't finished their structures yet. But we have seen, you know, some uh, interest in, uh, in in the metals market, and that's really sort of uh, taking over and um, sort of controlling the index because normally the finance sector would sort of control the index and reflect that pattern. You can see that when you have a look quite simply at the actual sectors, the XXJ or the XFJ for the financials and then compare that to the XJO, the ASX 200, you'll see they're quite similar. 
where the material sector, the XMJ, uh, has just been in a you know in a bear market like BHP, so totally different. So it seems to be it follows that a bit. But at the moment, because there's a lot of strength coming into um, into gold and and iron ore and copper are holding up quite well. Um, so we're really seeing the material sector, you know, get its teeth into the ASX and really sort of. Uh, really giving the sort of structure a real choppy sort of um, uh, uh, patterns. And this has been going on for quite some time, and this is why we've been using the, the DAX and the US markets to, to help navigate the ASX itself. Um, but anyway, just shooting the breeze. Uh, so let's just see, let's get some more evidence of, of uh, what's going to occur here. But I just wanted to present this particular pattern here because I don't really see anything wrong with it. Um, we just need the evidence to confirm um, you know that it's possible to get a third wave up here because if it is, I mean, you know, we, you know, we might be, we always need to be thinking of both sides of the market. In in most cases, there's, there's only probably ten percent of the time that you feel absolutely confident about something and it couldn't be anything else, and and then that's fine. Those, you know, and and I'll mention that if that's the case. Um, but um, I can see that global markets are in a bit of a turn, are approaching a turn. And we need to sort of, uh, you know, not trade so much, but study a little bit more and, and, and figure things out and, and uh, yeah, and work that way. So it's just one of those uh, points in time we need to put on a different hat, so to speak. Alrighty, cheers.